muni bond market unable to escape January's volatility after that record 2021. Muni yields are now spiking, risk premiums are jumping, and prices falling as the Fed prepares to raise rates. Last week, muni saw $1.4 billion of outflows, the largest since April of 2020, according to Refinitiv. Returns on the S&P muni bond index are at their lowest levels in 16 years, sitting at negative 2.3%. Joining me to explain is Tom Koslick, head of municipal research at Hilltop Securities. Tom, what's going on here? Hi, Kelly. Yeah, and you know, inve- as you very well know, investors don't like uncertainty. They don't like volatility. Municipal investors especially don't like the uncertainty. That's one of the reasons that they're in the sector. And the Fed was, there were a lot of head shakes back, there was a lot of back and forth. And this is one of the things that really, I think, caused the outflows last month. So, you know, just thinking through it, like you said, I can understand if people are seeing outflows in or declines in Arc K and some high flying stocks and they go, geez, I better go somewhere safer. But why were muni investors so panicked? You know, I, when the Fed raises rates or when rates start to move up on that concern, what typically happens to returns in munis over the next couple of months or years? Yeah, I, I think that one of the big reasons is. And this has really been playing out even since last summer. There were institutional investors that I was talking to uh, last summer into the fall who for months have been preparing for what it is that we're seeing now. Uh, One of the things that they've been doing is they've been holding some cash on the side uh, to make it so they can uh, withstand any significant uh, or lengthy fund uh, outflows. Uh, One of the things that I'm starting to see now is I'm starting to see some bargain pickers. There are some folks who are sifting through the beaten down sectors, and and I'm and I'm all and that's on the institutional side, on the retail side. One of the things that I'm starting to see is, you know, in the healthcare sector, the uh, A-rated investment grade, A-rated healthcare sector yields are they're not at the three percent level yet, but they're rising closer to the three percent level, and that is a psychological level. And all a lot of, if not all, the municipal yields have been rising, but that's one of the areas that I'm seeing on the retail side that's making so some retail investors. Are starting to get interested again, right? And like you said, you're looking at healthcare in particular. I mean, I think this uh, nice quote sums it up. Where one of the analysts was saying, "All the commotion is happening outside of our market. There wasn't a bankruptcy or some unforeseen event in Muni's. These are outside forces. Credit quality has been spectacular. Is there any reason to expect that might not be the case? I mean, as do we see, you know, stimulus funds kind of running out or any other hangover problems from the pandemic for state and local operations? So one of the things that I've been talking about since the beginning of last year is the golden age of public finance. And I believe because of how it is that Omicron has evolved, uh, it was billed as being uh, more contagious but less deadly. But it is, re- I mean, it is actually a lot more deadly than what I think a lot of people give it credit for. And I think that Omicron and just the idea that there's likely to be another wave in the summer and another wave in the fall, that's really creating some risk for this golden age of public finance that I've been talking about. But I think that state and local governments are more or less really insulated from that. I think that there are other sectors, uh, transportation, uh, healthcare, higher ed, that are going to be hit uh, harder. But I think that those are also areas where if you're careful with selecting the right credits, there's some opportunity there. Would there be any, I know it's hard to kind of recommend munis because they're just, you know, so niche, but are there any spaces that you think people should start to poke around? Yeah, I think that right now, the places where I'm seeing the bargain hunters poke around in is, you know, the higher red sector is a sector that was being beaten down even before COVID and especially because after COVID, the healthcare sector, uh, the higher ed sector, uh, even outside of the, the beaten down area, single family housing is another sector that I continue to like as well.